Fantasy TV. Welcome to the edge of the bottom of the Floridan Peninsula. I'm risking all the outdoor noises here at the end of the week because I'm feeling adventurous. So we got birds, we got dogs, we got bugs, you name it, who knows what will happen. But thank you for being here with me. This is MZTV. I am Martin Zender, the world's most outspoken Bible scholar. So you're at the right place. As I always say, at the edge of the bottom. The edge is that way. So that's east. The edge of the peninsula is that way. That's the beach. And then the bottom would be that way. Miami is about 25 miles down there. I just felt like you needed to know that. So let's get rolling. Have you ever had a, well, of course, everybody has, those scary things called close calls. Like you're driving and you're going through an intersection and somebody like buzzes through and like just misses you. I mean, there's numerous ways to have close calls. And you're tempted to think when these things happen that life is random. That, wow, that was lucky or whatever. But we know that God is in control of everything and he's even in control of where we are when we're there. My favorite verse, as you know, is Acts 17, 28. In him we live and move and are. So wherever we go, and even our state of being is of God. He puts us where he wants us. As you know from the Proverbs, a man's steps are ordered by God. Your steps are ordered by God. So I have a, well, I was going to call it a theory, but I don't think it's a theory about close calls. We are not aware how many things God protects us from all day. It's, we just go through days sometimes and we're just like skating and everything seems fine, nothing's happening. Oh, that was a great day. And what we don't realize, how many things like God's hand kept from us that could have been disastrous, right? Not only things outside, like, like a car coming through the intersection at 60 miles an hour, but even things inside your body, your white blood cells that are blocking diseases every day they're keeping things from happening to you and god is in charge of all this and, and so i mean to me it seems like a miracle but no it is a a miracle when days go by and like nothing horrible happens i mean it's a scary world so it, uh, it's not like i wait for something scary to happen every day but when i go to bed at night i just thank god that a major disaster didn't occur. I mean, I have kids, you know, I have three sons, they're living in different parts of the country, and you think about them, and you just know so many things can happen to your, to your loved ones. But most people take it for granted when things go well. Here's where the close call comes in. Don't you think that God could have avoided having that car go just in front of you and avoid hitting you broadside and putting you in the hospital or killing you don't you think God could have prevented that of course he's God so my thinking is here I'm gonna call it a theory but I think it has to be true because I know how God puts people where they are all people not not just believers but everybody I think he does he does his close calls on purpose just to remind you it's like you know, you get so unnerved when something like that happens. You know, it's almost like you got into the wreck. It was so close, you know, car goes, you're like, man, I almost died. And you have to like pull out the side of the road and, and get your breath. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, that was so close. And it makes you appreciate that you, that you were saved. But my point is, I have a feeling that that happens 20 times a day. God keeps something from us, but because it's not close, we don't notice it. We don't recognize it. He saves us 20 times a day from total disaster. Then once in a while, he says, I think I got to remind, I think I got to remind that guy. I think I got to remind Zender that I'm on it all the time. So I'm going to give him a brush with death, brush with death. And it's scary and you go through it and it helps you realize that God's there all the time and he said I'm protecting you night and day from this kind of thing night and day I just let you know for sure that I'm on it by this see 
I could have made that go the other way, but it didn't because I love you and it's not your time to go. So here you are and I protect you all the time. Just going back to the white blood cells that protect us from disease all the time. And God orders them. They're the busiest parts of your body. They're going around killing all these viruses and germs, the white blood cells. Did I call them red blood cells? Well, the red blood cells, yeah, the red blood cells are okay. I'm not a big fan of the red blood cells. I know we need them, but I'm a big fan of the white blood cells. They're busy. They got nasty jobs. They have to go out there and find all the nasty nasties and save you from them. Um, here's a scary verse from Luke 22, 31. Do you remember this? When um, Jesus said to Peter, he says, Satan desires to sift you men like wheat. But I have prayed for you and I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I mean, that, that's a scary verse, this is why, is because I have a feeling that Satan is like really powerful. And when Satan's, when, when Jesus says Satan desires to sift you like wheat, just think of a little tiny piece of wheat and just like it can be crushed. We can be crushed to powder by the evil powers in this universe. Like we have no idea how malevolent the powers of darkness are these creatures I mean Satan's the top but we are protected from these incredibly powerful and evil supernatural beings and we just walk around all day what a nice day it's like these monsters are being kept away from us and once in a while we have to hear about it so Jesus says to Peter, Satan desires to sift you, crush you like wheat. And Peter says, really? Oh, this is having a pretty good day. What do you mean? Jesus said, you have no idea what you're protected from. You have no idea what you are protected from every day. But again, every once in a while, we get an idea with what I call brushes with death, close calls. Just to remind us, that's how close it is so many times. I like this verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is a very comforting verse. This is Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He says, this is helpful to know. He says, no trial has overtaken you except what is human. Now just think about that for a second. Sometimes we go through trials, emotional trials, physical trials that are so bad that we think like, I can't stand this another second, get me out of this, this is inhuman. But it's not. It's not inhuman. As bad as it is, it's common to humanity. Whatever you're going through, nothing, no trial has come to you except what is human. And it also tells you that, well, there must be inhuman trials then. There, there, there must be trials that are inhuman. And again, that goes back to Luke 22, 31. As I told you, those inhuman spiritual beings, they're not humans. They're not humans. And they hate us. Satan hates us. You know that. But we're protected night and day from him. And Christ is like our, our celestial white blood cell. Like Jesus Christ is in a way like a white blood cell that just keeps these inhuman trials from us and I mean I think of terrible things you know like people in the wars or people in in communist countries you hear people being tortured and just the most awful things and you think man that's inhuman but it's actually not because no trial has come that is not human and that's kind of comforting because there's nothing's going to happen that you somehow some way can't handle I mean I know it's awful believe me yeah I understand that you writhe, you scream, you feel like you're going to die. But still, it's still, it's only human. It's only human. Now, I'm going to, in Philippians 1, 16, th this is a very interesting passage. Uh, this is Paul, and he says, concerning himself, he says, I love the specificity of this. Says, I am located for the defense of the gospel. Isn't that strange wording? I am located for the defense of the gospel. A normal way to talk would be like, yeah, my job is I defend the gospel. Uh, my job is I just get up every day and I 
go to work teaching the, the gospel. No, he said, I'm located for it. And in fact, it's a verb here, and in the concordant version, you probably can't see this, there's a little vertical stroke in front of that verb located. What that means is it's in the indefinite verb form, so it's ongoing. So the way it would read literally in the Greek is, I, I am being located for the evangel. Be, I am being located. My question is, by who? Who is locating you? Like, there are coordinates where Paul is supposed to be at a certain time, and he's being located for that. And, and like, God puts us where we're supposed to be. We're located, right? It's like God, of course, knows that at noon we're supposed to be at 10th Street and Andrews Avenue. We're located there. But, of course, we don't know it. We just go about our day or write a stoplight but that's exactly where we're supposed to be at that time this goes back of course to the close calls there's no such thing as an accident in God's world he puts everybody where they want them and Paul uses this cool word I think we're low I'm located it speaks of something that like uh, that's above what he's doing it's almost like he's being moved like a chess piece I am being located for the gospel I think that's comforting that whenever you think you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're never in the wrong place at the right at the wrong time. You're in the right place at the right time all the time, even though it seems like, what the hell am I doing here? This is the worst place I've ever been at the worst time. It's actually not. You are located for that. Like you go to a to a meeting or no, let's say you, you go you go to a party and it turns out to be a disaster, people getting drunk and risk criminals there or whatever you say I shouldn't be here it's the worst place at the worst time no you are located to be at that party you have been located for some reason you're supposed to be there at those coordinates not two feet to the left not two feet to the right because if a chandelier falls and misses you then I guess you're in the right location right that is precise location on God's GPS Jeez, I, I've compared Jesus Christ to a white blood cell and God to a GPS system now, why not that sounds good to me. And so, and then one more place, Paul uses this word in 1 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. He says this, and this is, will comfort you through the weekend. I want you to think about this through the weekend because I'm not going to be here for a couple of days. I know, don't be sad. I'm sad too. But don't worry, on Saturday, no, on Sunday, Rodney Paris, we're going to do another, um, another, video for you where Rodney is taking my, my cassette tapes from 25 years ago. Nobody has a cassette player, I don't think. Do, you, do any of you have a cassette player? I don't. I made uh, some cassette tapes 25 years ago. Great themes, but nobody can play them. So Rodney Paris, as you know, has digitized them and put, them, put some cool video to them. So anyway, that, that's come out on Sunday. So you'll be able to hear me on Sunday. But in the waning moments of this show, you with me and me with you, I'm going to give you this verse and you're going to like it. It's 1 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. The Thessalonians, let me give you the backstory a little bit. The Thessalonians were going through trials and they were thinking that some, again, some weird thing was happening to them and they were confused, thinking, does God hate us? Paul, does God hate us? Why is this happening? And then they saw what Paul was going through. And they said, hey, Paul, sorry, we thought we were going through something. <laughs> you're out there getting beaten. You're getting shipwrecked. You're getting stoned. You're in danger in the country, in danger in the city, in danger by your countrymen, in danger by strangers. Sorry, Paul, we're not going through anything compared to you. And this is what Paul says about that. 1 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. No one is to be swayed by these afflictions. For you yourselves are aware that we are located for this. There it is again, that great word, we are located for this. And again, that vertical stroke is in front of that word in the concordant version, which means it's an ongoing action, incomplete verb form. We are being located. For what? For afflictions. So in that example I gave you is the chandelier falls down and you're two feet to the left. Okay, what if you're not and the ch chandelier falls on your head? Well, you were located for that. Why would God locate me in the exact spot where a chandelier is going to fall? Why couldn't I have been two feet to the left 
or two feet to the right because you were located for that affliction. For some reason, it was time for you to have a chandelier fall on your head. Sorry, it was just time for it. For whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe, you know, you end up in the hospital for sure. Gonna have some cuts, gonna have a knot on your head. You might meet your future wife at the hospital. I don't know. You might share the gospel with somebody at the hospital and bring them into Aeonian life. Who knows? But you were located for it. Know that. That's comforting. Just as we are located to be, to have near misses so that we appreciate God's protection 24-7, we're also located for that affliction. Paul says, we're lo I'm located for these afflictions. He goes, cool it. Don't worry about it. Stay cool. Don't be upset by my afflictions. I'm located for this. That's what he says. I am located for this. In other words, every time Paul was beaten, he was located for that. He was in the right place at the right time to be apprehended and beaten. When Paul was shipwrecked, he was in the right place at the right time for his ship to go down. Because we know that through afflictions, through trials, we're made mature. We come to rely on God and not on ourselves. Every affliction has a purpose. You don't see it right away. You see it eventually. It all has a purpose. And it helps you to know that. It helps you to realize that it has a purpose when you find out that we are absolutely located for these things that happen to us. GPS coordinates. God is the GPS deity putting us exactly where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there. And don't forget this, Jesus Christ is a giant white blood cell. Goes through the universe keeping us from some big, hairy, scary monsters out there. Let that comfort you. Because I feel wonderfully comforted by my own words, actually. <laughs>